Well, what I have here is a very recent acquisition. It is another Electrola 101. This one is probably the earliest Electrola that I have. Now, all of these were made for Electrola by HMV in Hayes Middlesex. You look on the motor and I'll show you in a minute. It's right on there. But uh, apparently at this time, Electrola was simply a dealer and selling, reselling these under their own name, you know, under license from HMV. They weren't manufacturing them. Well, later on with the uh, 106s and later on the 102s, they were, but uh, and other experimental machines they had. But this is like almost a transitional model of an early model 101. As you can see, it's not a front crank machine. It's on the side, but this does have the earlier style motor, not the number 59 with the spam can. This has the earlier style. You'll notice it has the cover on the uh, on the crank hole there, which is a feature I think they should have kept, but they did away with it and they left it and, you know, dirt can get in there. You see it has the old style. Of course, it's gone. They always are. The old style handle is on there. Just as regular, the same handle that you saw, similar as that was on the, uh, the Bradley I did in a video a little while back. And... See the record tray? It has the earlier style of Electrola 101 uh, water decal there. As you can see, it's much bigger, a little bit more ornate than the other one. Desperately needs to be cleaned, and some of the wreck scenes coming loose there, that has to be re-glued. All typical stuff. Now, what this machine had as an earlier 101 that I suspected it might have, but I've never actually seen on any of mine, is this. This is an all-brass, number four, Electrola reproducer. Now, I've seen dozens of crumbling, cracked, and one good, or usable, number four, Mar Electrola Mark number four reproducer. Never saw a brass one. I figured they had to exist because HMV early 101s, they did use a brass number four, all brass body. That's a brass back, brass front, and still looking as nice as it did in probably, I don't know, 1927, 28, somewhere around in there. Gas gets a harder stone, but that's typical. You know, you'll find that with even the H well, this is an HMV one. You'll find that with all of them, except one, only one that I ever find that had a pliable gasket still in it, and I think that might have been replaced. I cannot believe that the gasket was almost ninety, you know, over ninety years old and still in good shape. It probably had been replaced at some point. I'm told that uh, one-piece gaskets are available in the UK, and you can import them. I have seen them, actually. But they're a little pricey, and the two-piece gaskets work just as well, so I don't see the point of importing them. But uh, somebody might have. But I finally have, right here, an all-brass Electrola number 4 that completes my collection of these. I have all-brass uh, Victor, all-brass HMV Mark, the regular HMV, and now all brass Electrola marked. That will be rebuilt. And the rest of the, the machine, obviously. You can see by the uh, <laughs> layers of dust that this machine hasn't been serviced in a long time. The motor does work. It does spin. I cranked it up just to test it, and it did spin. Yeah, you heard spring noises, thumping and bumping, but that's normal. The dry springs do that. Don't know how this happened. You see the speed control there? It's actually touching the motor board. That's not supposed to do that. There's supposed to be a little bit of a gap there. That should be high. And I noticed this too. Somebody has bent this little arm here down a little to put more stretch on the spring so that it would have a little more snap and possibly catch better. It seems to hold the turntable, but that is not the way that's supposed to be either. And it's almost touching the motor board. We want to do away with that. The motor arm's in pretty good shape. Well, nickel plating is still pretty good. It's a little stiff from lack of lubrication. But it's not too loose there in the back. We have a broken clip. I believe I have a spare somewhere for that. 
Let's see here. You can tell right away it's got the older motor because look how that speed control sits on there. Generally, this would be rotated over more this way on, on the number 59 motor. And you don't see this nice plate here either. <laughs> okay. Excuse me here a second while I turn this over so you can see it. Okay. As you can see, that's the uh, HMV-101's motor. All they did was shave off an end here on the, on the plate. Didn't alter the motor any. Just shaved off an end so that it clears into the horn of the 101. But other than that, this is the same pillar and plate motor used on the 101. You can see that the spring barrel has screws holding it together. No clips on this yet. Everything looks pretty good. I know we have brass gears. No fiber gears in this. And there's no, you know, nothing alarming here that I see. It's just dirty. Dirty for many, many years of sitting. These were nice motors. And really, not a whole lot mechanically different than the 101's number 59 or the one they used in the 102. All pretty much the same components. That governor basically would, would interchange with Victor. In fact, I have interchanged a few of them with Victor. Back and forth. Just to see if they would work. And they do. Perfectly. They're in the same exact dimensions, sizes, weights, everything is the same as the Victor company used. And we have... That looks like a felt washer there. I do not know if that is supposed to be there. I've never seen that before on one of these, but we will examine it when I get it apart. And see if that belongs there. I don't recall that from any of the 101s that I've worked on, but I could be misremembering it. Easiest way to tell is to see how, how that turntable sits on there. <laughs> if it sits a little too high, then that doesn't belong there. Oh, there we go. We're spinning a little bit. Look at that. Spring is sticky. All that dried out old gook in there is kind of holding it up a little. I'll have to spin that by hand to make sure I got all the pressure off the spring before I take it all apart and scrub it and these things take an inordinate amount of scrubbing to get them clean the, those springs they used vegetable and animal based greases and lubricants on these and uh, while well, Victor tended to use more petroleum base and when vegetable based oils get dried out they turn to cement really can be a trial to deal with them the friction leather has some wear but not too bad look at that crap go gooped up all over it and down here no surprises notice though a total lack of the uh diagram to tell you how to grease and oil it it should be there but it's not maybe the electrolas simply didn't get them same markings on the horn you would find on anything with regular hmv markings lots of dust in there probably thousands of spent needles hiding underneath the horn someplace Waiting to be pried out. And the motor board's in pretty good shape, too. Needs a good scrubbing. But they always do. That's just typical. You get one of these, and they, I bet this machine's been sitting probably 50, 60, 70, 80 years. You never know. Yeah. No way really to tell. But definitely a prize with that old brass Number four, with Electrola markings. All brass HMVs are not that unusual. They're around. Oh, I wanted to show you the markings on the motor. There we go. Motor. Number 410, manufactured by the Gramophone Company, Hayes Middlesex, England. All they did was put the Electrola name on the reproducer and right there. And I didn't even put German on the, the, the gauges of the speed control. Slow and fast. It's in English. Yeah. <laughs> so this was uh, basically the same machine they would have for the English home market in the UK. Just, uh, you know, marked, simple marking on a simple water decal for the German market. That was it. That's really all they did. But this is an, oh, I put a grease smear on there. This is, uh, you know, as I guess I would call it anyway, a transitional model because... It has attributes of the old model, 
while they're starting to modernize it to a different machine to what it eventually became later on in 1929, 1930, 31. You know, we have the crank on the side. Eventually, it would get the new, newer style handle that they would carry over to the 102. The horn doesn't change. That stays the same. The motor definitely goes, goes through changes. Two more after this. But they're all good. It's a good motor. They're all good motors, just different. You know, no one is any better than the other. Just different. Oh, well, the one thing about the number 59, these little spam can motors, is they're the only Victrola motor that I know of, from the, well, not Victrola, HMV motor or Victrola motor, that's fully enclosed. So they tend to stay a lot cleaner dust-wise and, you know, dust bunnies and that sort of thing than other motors do because there's just no way for dust to get in there too easily. The only dirt you have to deal with is just baked on old grease. You know, it's just a matter of scrubbing. Lots and lots of scrubbing and kerosene and everything else. This same crank as you would see on any 101. Uh, let's see, we have assembly number 4040. Don't know if that's a serial number or not because these do not have a serial number plate on them. Is there one on this one? 4040 somewhere on there? Nope. Doesn't appear there is. For some reason, they put it there, but nowhere else. I think that's a four anywhere. Is it a fancy one? No, that's a four. Four all, four all. I have to look, see if I find another four all, four all hidden somewhere on this machine. And we'll know that it's uh, that's the number. Don't know why they didn't serial number these. They didn't do it with a lot of the one-on-ones either. At least not all of them. And there's no sign there was ever a tag attached anywhere. Sometimes it's a round, kind of plastic-like disc right there. Sometimes it's under the under the turntable, a little metal tag. I mean, there's always something like that, but I do not see one on this one. I've got some felt pads coming loose under there. We'll take care of that when we have it apart. The wood's in very good shape. Nice and solid. There's no rot. You gotta be careful sometimes because you don't know when these things sit around a while. They can get wood worm. They can get uh, dry rot. You know, this one, I can see that the, the rec scene is starting to lift a little bit. On one side, this is the downside. It was probably facing toward the ground at some point. Who knows where, in a damp location, possibly many, many years ago, but look, judging by the condition of it. But that's normal. You see that all the time in these. And the only way to deal with that, really, is to just recover the whole machine, which is not going to happen on my watch. Not with this one, anyway. You know, there's nothing wrong with that cover the way it is, as far as I'm concerned. It's an antique, and it looks the part. Still doing its job. What do we got in the needle box? Oh, that's what I was going to say. There, I got to figure out what this little plate is off of. It looks familiar. I know it goes somewhere. This was sliding around in there. Now, what does that sound like? Kind of sounds like a coin, doesn't it? Well, when I got this machine, I shook it, and I heard that going around in there. And I said, oh, boy, maybe there's a gold coin in there. Boy, that'd be nice. Little uh, little tip for me, but uh, nope. Just a little piece of metal that fell off of something, and I will discover what when I dig in a little bit more. It's inside there, so it didn't get in there by accident. Really is no convenient way for it to fall in there unless the motor is open, as it is now, which it was not, and usually wouldn't be. You see, it's also got the old-style clasp on there. That's a older style, not a carryover from the HMV 100. Mind you, mine have a similar one, but smaller. But this was used on some of these machines. They went through quite a lot of different lid, lid clasps on these things. Several different styles that I know of. Some more fancy than others. And there you go. I thought you'd preliminary look at the newest 101 in my collection. That's going to have to have all the scrubbing done to it, as you would expect. I like these, these early machines. I just like to work with them. You know, they're more closer to the years of Victrolas that I like to work with which are the mid to early to mid-1920s and the teens. And I always love working with these motors. What did they call this motor, the 410? Yeah, I can never remember these numbers on here. I remember the 59, that's about the only one I remember. But this is the 410. But uh, I like working with these spring barrels. They're so easy with the, screw, with the screws like that. No fighting with clips or peened over edges or anything like that. You know, roll over uh, edges on those uh, spring barrels and later motors. It's just nice to work with. 
you get spoiled working on that after a while. Then you go to a, one with a spring on it, you're like, ah. See that little screw right there? Whoops, you would if it was focusing. There we go. That makes life easier. As long as you're not fumble fingered. What I like to do is whenever I work with these screws, I make sure I do it over a towel. So if I do fumble it, trust me, I do. It falls onto the soft surface and is retained. It doesn't bounce across the floor, causing me to spend three hours looking for it. And this also has the lid clasp where it should be. Oh, that's right. That was the 100. I used to swap it back and forth. This one didn't have it on the other side, I don't believe. Always on this side. And no auto brake, of course. Too early for that. So you don't have to mess with that. Electrola. Okay. There you go.